If you're coming in now, welcome. We'll be starting very shortly. Say hi. I see a lot of the staff is here. So nice to see you. I see a lot of familiar faces. If you're just joining us, we'll be starting very, very shortly. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the second night of town halls for the elementary. I'm Debbie Hamburg. I'm the principal of the elementary. And I want to welcome second to fifth grade families. I want to welcome the returning families. And of course, a special welcome to the new families who are joining us. We're really excited to meet you, get to know you as well as your children. And tonight is going to be uh, a town hall where I'm going to share a lot of information that I'm sure that you've been wondering about. I hope to answer your questions in the presentation. At the end of the presentation, there'll be an opportunity for you to send me questions on the chat and I will be happy to answer them then. And please know that um, it really is a pleasure to be able to be here we all miss school and um, it's really wonderful. Just looking at the building is enough to make us want to be back at school. So I'd like to start with our mission statement and it is through the light of Torah and academic excellence, the Hebrew Academy inspires each and every student to inspire the world. As you can see by the faces of those beautiful children, that photograph was actually taken on Pink Day, where we, um, we celebrated with all of the children and we explained to them the importance of supporting groups like Shosheret. That's, that's what that, sh that picture is. Uh, but it really explains in the mission statement exactly who we are and what we're about. So for those of you who know me, um, I'm probably a very familiar face because I live here in Surfside. For those of you who are joining us, welcome. Just to let you know that I have been living in Surfside for the last four years. I'm a member of the Young Israel of Val Harbor, and I am fully entrenched in the South Florida Jewish community. Just as a little bit of a bio, before I was here, I was the assistant principal in Brooklyn at the Mag and David Yeshiva and worked closely with my team that came from Ramaz. Before that, I was at the Hebrew Academy of Nassau County, and I also did curriculum. And most of my years have been spent in the elementary division. So it's really the division that I feel very passionate about. So I wanted to share this quote with you because I was looking for something that really spoke to what we're about. And it's from George Curios. And if you are familiar, familiar with who he is, you won't be surprised by the quote. And if you aren't, I would really suggest 
that you Google him and look him up because he is a genius. And it says, open your eyes and your heart and see the possibilities and through them into opportunities. If you don't see one yet, you need to take some initiative and find one for yourself. Challenges become opportunities. And I think it's a really important quote because there are many challenges for all of us today. And tonight I'm going to explain to you a little bit about some of the challenges we may have faced, but how we are handling them. The first thing that I wanted to share with you is about opening school. And I wanted to make it as clear as possible, even though I know you received a letter about it, but I wanted to explain it a little bit as well. The Hebrew Academy will be opening on August 24th. That is the official first day of school. Our K and one students, and I'm really only talking about elementary right now, will have the opportunity to come in physically or access us virtually. But two to five will begin virtually on August 24th. We'll give it a little time. We'll work at any kinks. And then on September 8th, the, two, the second and third graders will have the opportunity to come back to campus. You always will have that virtual option for your children, but that is the first day of physical school for grades two and three. But the thing that's important to note, K and one is on one floor and one zone of our school, and two through five is another zone in our school. That's the upstairs corridor. For those of you who are familiar with the school, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But for those of you who aren't, I just wanted to make it a little clearer. Then after K to three has been in school, grades four and five will join us on September 15th. And of course, always a virtual option will continue. And I want to really reiterate that our first concern is always the safety and the well-being of our students and our staff. And using this method of staggered opening, we hope to keep the school open and to stay open because that really is our goal. So I want to explain to you uh, a little bit about the elementary division. As you know, the elementary division encompasses grades K to five, but you see on this slide many of the reasons why I know that you've chosen the school, but I also want you to know that the school is in existence for 73 years, and it's always been a school that has prioritized the Jewish education of our youngsters. And it's really important for you to know that all of this is done because of the amazing staff that we have. It is an outstanding and dedicated staff. They have long-term relationships with many, many families. Some of you here might even be children or grandchildren of people who went to the Hebrew Academy. And so your children are, could be the second or third generation Hebrew Academy. And we're very, very proud of that. So I want to highlight the picture, and then I want to discuss something very important with you. This is a picture that was photographed last year at the very, very beginning of school during teacher orientation. And that's a pretty good idea of who's who in our staff. Maybe a few additions, maybe a few not here. But the thing that I wanted to show you also was the fact that they're standing around and kneeling around a kosher food bank basket. And the whole idea is not only are they excellent in terms of being supports for academic and social emotional learning, but they're also into chesed and doing things as a group. So to that, I'd like to address something that I'm sure many of you on the call are wondering about. It has been very, very challenging during this time of COVID and with the pandemic to have staff that are able to come to school. Unfortunately, two of our staff members let me know that they will not be able to return to school full-time this year. One of them was the second grade general studies teacher. The other one was the fifth grade general studies teacher. And we have been working tirelessly, interviewing, meeting, looking at alternatives, trying to find the best way, because it's most important who we have in the classroom. And the other thing is we want excellence. There may be candidates there, but if they don't fit what we feel will be appropriate for our school and of course for our children, then it's a non-starter. So I have some updates that I'd like to share with you, as they say, hot off the presses. And um, I hope that it will help to ease some of your angst. 
In second grade last year, we had a team of Tammy Goldring and Noah Shabbat. Well, this year, we actually will be able to start the year with that team, but Tammy will be more working more in her passion, which is working with students in second grade in the areas of reading and writing. And that's something that is really going to be fantastic. And she will be working remotely, but she will be available to work as a partner with Noah as she needs it. And we're hoping that that team together and of course the support of all the rest of the elementary team, the AEP team, the psychologist, of course myself, uh, Beth Landisman, everyone will be working together to ensure the success of our beautiful second graders. Of course, also on the second grade team in the Judaic Studies Department is Mrs. Benzakan and Mara Ortal, and they, God willing, will be here with us. The fifth grade was also quite a challenging position to fill because the teacher, the general studies teacher, was not going to be able to come back. So we have worked out, and we're very happy to say that Mrs. Jen Rothman will be joining us to do math in the fifth grade. She is a math expert, and she's been in our school for more than nine or 10 years. If you've been in the school, you know her, and I'm sure you love her, as we do. And with her on the general studies side will also be Mrs. Pinasov, who has been there previously. And we're always looking to fill in the gaps. We have some other possibilities. We're working on them, we're in conversation. And as soon as I have official notification, I will absolutely you know, share that with you when it's firmed up. And on the Judaic study side, as always, we have, of course, Rabbi Weberman, who is not only the teacher, but he's also our Judaic studies coordinator. So I hope that helps to give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on. And I also want to just give you an idea of who some other staff members are. So when we, um, we're going to highlight them. So we're going to introduce them. Uh, in third grade, we have Mrs. Ben Simone. We have Mrs. Shochei. We have Elena Holland. In fourth grade, we have Alana Safransky, Carly Schwartz, Shari, Shari Bar Barakov. And in fifth grade, again, we have Rabbi Weberman, Doris Pinasov, Jen Rothman. So you get a little glimpse into some of our most wonderful, wonderful staff. It is really a pleasure to work with them. I've worked in many, many schools. I've never met a staff more dedicated, more interested in working on what is best for children, because that's why we're here. We're working on who is best for children. And we're in this together. I, we help each other, we work together. It's not mine, it's ours. And that's really important that you should know that. And I'm sure that those of you who have been in the school know that as well. So thank you staff for joining us. I'm just waiting for the next slide. So I wanted to talk also a little bit about the relationships with the teachers, but how it's going to look for this year. When you start school in a non-COVID year, there are opportunities for teachers to meet with students in person. But this is a little bit more challenging. So we have worked a schedule, which we will be sharing shortly, where teachers will be meeting with students on a Zoom for the entire grade with full class, small group, and some individual students, as well as some returning students. This is going to happen in the next couple of weeks. Some of it may happen a little bit before school starts, and some of it may happen when school is starting, because it's also really important for students to develop relationships with each other. So that relationship of the adult with the children, as well as the children with each other, is definitely something that we are prioritizing. So I'd like to introduce Mrs. Rena Rabofsky, who wasn't able to be here personally, but has a greeting for you. Hi, everyone. Good evening. I wanted to introduce myself to the new family. Okay, we're, we'll be back. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Good evening. 
I wanted to introduce myself to the new families that have joined us tonight. My name is Rena Rabevsky, and I am the school psychologist at Hebrew Academy Elementary School. Welcome everybody, we're glad you're here, and we welcome you to the Hebrew Academy family. So my role at Hebrew Academy as the school psychologist might look a little bit different this year, but in general, I'm here to help provide social and emotional support to all of the students, parents, families, teachers, and administrators. So that includes all different kinds of supports. Um, I work with students individually and in small groups. I do social emotional learning in the classroom and then general social and emotional programming, as well as parent workshops, crisis intervention, behavior support, and really anything that students need at school and especially to help new families with transitioning to the Hebrew Academy. So we look forward to all of you joining us. I also wanted to tell you about a website that Dr. Susie London and I created. Dr. London is the psychologist in the middle school and high school. So if you go on the Hebrew Academy website, you'll see that there's a link to our special site with lots of resources for parents, for parenting, for managing anxiety and for helping students through um, the challenges that they've all been experiencing. So I look forward to welcoming all of you and helping your transition and supporting you in any way I can. So if you'd like to touch base before school starts, you can reach out via email, rrabovsky at rasp.org. I look forward to welcoming all of you in person and to welcoming back students from years past as well. So enjoy the rest of the evening and can't wait to talk soon. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the schedule and the design of the day. One of the things that happened last year was that it just happened. <laughs> One day we were in physical school and the next day we weren't. And we learned a lot from that. And when we decided how we were going to design this year, we really learned a lot from your feedback as well and from the experiences of the teachers. So there are a few points that I really would like to share with you that are on the slide, but I, I wanna add a little bit more too. First of all, the important thing to note that the schedules were designed, and in a few minutes, you'll see a sample of a schedule, whether you're in school or whether you're remote. So in other words, if you've made the decision to send your children to school, they will have a certain schedule. And if you decided not to send your children to school, and they're in, let's say, second grade, they will have the same schedule. And I'll, just, I'll explain a little later how we're able to do that. When we made the schedule, we were focusing first and foremost on the core subjects in each Judaic and general studies areas. But we also have other things in the schedule. We have things like PE. We have outside breaks where children are able to go outside and have um, opportunities to just be kids and not be in a classroom. Also, we have two types of learning, and I, I, maybe you've heard the words before, maybe not, but in case you do hear them, I just wanna kind of clear up for you what they are and what they mean. We have Zoom classes and those are synchronous learning classes. And those are classes that are live, that are happening in real time. And if you're in the classroom, obviously you're with the teacher. But if you are looking into the classroom and you're doing it remotely, we have cameras and we have a microphone for the teacher and you are able to hear and see exactly what is happening. It's almost as if you're there, but you're not really there. But it's important to also note, you're not there physically. It's also important to note that Zoom classes can and will be recorded so that if a student does miss the class, weren't able to attend at the time, they will be able to do it in what we call an asynchronous way, a recorded way. And we do those classes, we share videos, we also share things, for example, from Brain Pop, we share things um, from YouTube, things that are appropriate for students to be able to watch and to learn about the subject matter before they actually come into the class or at their own leisure. Some children do very well in real time and other children do better learning at their own pace. So it's really important that we want to, as always, it's always part of our um, hallmark is that we work with individual students in a personalized way. And with asynchronous learning, we're able to do that. As we said, you might be in a, a whole class situation, a small group or one-on-one. -on -one. one of the things we learned is that whole class for really very long periods of time does not work for children who are 
either in school or learning remotely. So we will have some whole class lessons, but many times things will be broken into small groups and many times teachers will do one-in-one -one learning with them. One of the ways we can do this is with something called a station rotation, where children's learning is rotated between the teachers and independent work. If you've heard the term flipped classroom, I want to explain it a little bit. What it means is that there's learning that happens before we actually get into the room, and then it's their pre-knowledge, and then they come into the classroom, and then they're able, either remotely or physically, and then they're able to have this pre-knowledge and be a little bit more advanced in terms of what goes on. And it's really important to know that um, this whole idea of a, of a little preview is always a good way because it activates prior knowledge and it gets kids thinking in a certain method, in a certain way. It's important to note that our school in second to fifth grade is in one zone. It's the zone that's upstairs. But within the zone, there is what's called a cohort. And every single grade and every single class will be part of a cohort. And that's going to be very important because we need to, you need to know about movement and about um, how things are going to work in the school. So when you hear about zones and cohorts, that's how it's going to be organized. Also, it's important to note that the schedule is adaptive in the sense that um, you can see that we try to make it as clear as possible for you and for the students and of course the teachers that exactly what's happening when. This is a, this is a sample schedule of a third grade and what it shows you as, as the day progresses, this particular group, this particular cohort has their general studies classes in the morning and then they have lunch and they have breaks and they have snack and they have a virtual special, all the things that really enrich the day. And then they have their Judaic studies classes in the afternoon with Eve Reach, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, and PE. That's one cohort of third grade, and the other cohort is actually flipped, and they have their Judaic studies classes in the morning. And in the afternoon, they have their general studies, and they also have PE at the end of the day. PE is done grade by grade, not class by class. I wanted to talk a minute about Ivrit because I don't think I mentioned the Ivrit teachers when I went through all of the names of the teachers. So I wanna do that right now. The two teachers um, that are here are Mazal Azule, Jessica Kaplan, and also Ortal Kutner, who does Ivrit in both second grade and with the Ivrit team. Um, and I wanted to let you know that Ivrit is one of the important focuses of our school. It's a leveled course and the students work either remotely or in class using different kinds of materials. Whatever we are using, we have made sure not only in the major subject areas, but in Ivrit to be able to be used in a digital as well as in a physical way. So, and it's been a little challenging because a lot of these different programs had to come up to speed and we had to be able to you know, access them, but we really have worked on it. And I'm sure when you meet your teachers, you're gonna get a little bit uh, more information about that. I wanted to go over a little bit about the special events and celebrations. And if you see the list here, I'm obviously not going to read it, I don't have to, but a lot of these things you visualize happening in school. But some of these events had to happen virtually because they happened towards the end of the year. And I wanna say that one of the highlights of the kindergarten, the third grade and the fifth grade this past year was the virtual CM. And even when it's in school, I mean, it's, it's incredible. But this year it was a little challenging because it had to be done over Zoom. But what happened is we had a really beautiful experience because people from all over the world, and thank God many of our families have relatives all over the world, not all just all over the United States, but they were able to come to these celebrations. And perhaps if it was only physical, they wouldn't have been able to do it. We also had something that was really incredible. We had a restaurant for the second grade, and that is something that's really hard to imagine virtually. If you speak to any parents whose children were in second grade last year, they will tell you that they did it. 
and it, we worked it out and children made their special uh, treats and people came to visit them with their social distant ways and it really worked out really great. The other thing to wanted to highlight also in the Israel studies, we study about things like the Aliot and Entebbe. And as a matter of fact, um, we even had uh, someone come to our school, our group who were um, children when Entebbe happened. And they said of all the schools they went to, no school would ever get, have the background knowledge that these particular children had at Entebbe. And I think it's really important that um, you understand that we really, really prioritize our Israel studies as well. Okay, I would like to talk to you a little bit about the virtual school experience. And, and it's particularly the way school will start for second to fifth. So I wanted to let you know that the school has spent a tremendous amount of time, effort and money with our IT, IT team to install cameras and microphones in the room, as well as a large monitor for when we actually come back to physical school and students are remote, they would be able to access the school. Our learning management systems of Seesaw for the second grade, actually K1 and 2, and Google Classroom also is a way that remote students will be able to submit their work and have it evaluated in real time. Small groups will be a tremendous part of our virtual school experience. It's important to know that if there is a live class going on, they can also be put into breakout rooms. And that's something that we may not have done a lot of previously, but we have really put that into our program this year. All the materials and projects that need to be done will make opportunities to be distributed uh, for students in advance. And I think something else that's really important to know is that social interconnection is always going to be in the forefront, especially for students in elementary school. I, when they're older or they're middle and high school, they kind of make their own groups. But I know it's really important for us to facilitate for them. It's important to notice that everything that we're doing, we're doing to enhance the student experience. It's all about what's going to work best for students. Uh, this slide gives you a little taste of some of the digitized and personalized learning programs that we have. It's not all of it, but I wanted to just give you a sprinkling. iReady is a program that we've had in place, but we're now going to use it in second to fifth grade for reading and for math. And the thing that is so wonderful about iReady is they were already a digital platform. They also have books and we are going to have textbooks as well, but those textbooks will be able to be accessed you know, digitally as well. And they also are programs that are adaptive. The children will start with a diagnostic and they'll be able to work at their own pace and excel in the areas that they excel and enrich in those areas and areas that need support, teachers will be able to note and they'll be able to give them one-on-one -on -one, as well as small group instruction. RAS Plus is also a blended learning platform now. They had some blended learning, but, um, but they've really kicked it up a notch with much more personalization and things that students want to know about are in RAS Plus. A lot of these stories are really engaging and exciting. But my personal favorite, everyone knows, is Newsomatic. And Newsomatic is an interactive news agency for children. And every day, the children throughout the elementary school will be receiving their login. Well, they'll receive a login and they'll be receiving their Newsomatic news. And it's sort of the way probably most of us read news now with our tablet or our phone or our device. And Newsomatic does that as well. But the thing that's so really wonderful about Newsomatic is that it was developed by psychologists, always thinking what will be best for children and even some difficult topics they handle in the most professional way. The, the articles are done on different levels. So a student, for example, or second and third grade who's reading above level may read an article on a higher level, but the content is the same. And there's a lot more to Newsomatic, and we'll, you'll hear more about it. This is not a curriculum night, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of it. 
in the Judaic Studies Department, we're using the Italon program for Ivrit all the way through, and it's a very, very successful program for he Hebrew language acquisition. In our Ivrit department in three to five, they also use other materials as well, but the Italon is purely with a login, and then they can do their own personal work, and it's important that we incorporate that. Um, some of the other programs the Ivrit teachers will be telling you about. In Chumash, we have Lavinu La Skill, which is a Hebrew language skills-based program that does the, that uh, coincides very well. It is our Chumash program. And it, we also use Merkava. As I said, much more to come, but I wanted to give you a little taste. Any of the programs that we're using this year, we're using programs also like Mystery Science, and we're looking into starting with uh, things like, um, let me see on my little, um, and Tinker, things were, they're in development, we're working towards them, but whatever we use, we want to make sure that they are equally successful to be used in a physical, as well as, as in a remote classroom. That is, we are really looking to make sure the best hybrid learning takes place in the elementary school. To that end, I'm going to introduce Beth Landisman. She is our blended learning coordinator. It's a brand new position in the elementary school, really based on the needs of what's happening. And Beth has been working in the school for a while, so some of you might know her. So I will turn the program over to Beth. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Beth Landisman. This is my sixth year as an employee of the Hebrew Academy. My role this year as the blended learning coordinator is to collaborate with teachers in creating effective technology infused content based instruction, as well as support the teachers as they implement lessons in their physical and virtual classrooms. I will host training sessions and produce video tutorials for parents and students on all our online and digital platforms that will be used in the classroom. Two of the learning management systems that I wanted to discuss tonight. Uh, the first one is going to be Seesaw. Seesaw is a digital portfolio and learning system where teachers can create meaningful multimedia experiences for students. Teachers assign activities to their students, just like this subtra subtraction worksheet you see here. Students can use the text, writing, voice recording, and various other tools to complete their assignments. Seesaw empowers students to create, reflect, collaborate, and share. Teachers can voice record instructions so students can replay it as many times as they need. Our goal is for students to be as independent as possible. With the Seesaw app and its capabilities, we believe this goal will be achieved. The Seesaw Family app allows parents to view their child's work and easily communicate between home and school. This will be for K through second grade. Our other learning management system is Google Classroom for third to fifth. Google Classroom offers a one-stop platform for facilitating digital production, workflow, and communication between teachers and students. Students have each class subject and corresponding assignment neatly organized and accessible. The to-do list feature allows students to get a quick glance of which assignments they need to complete and which they have already turned in. Google Classroom allows teachers to view student work in real time to provide immediate feedback. All of the students' assignments get neatly organized into their own Google Drive folder that allows students and teachers to access their work. And lastly, we're introducing Clever. When students log into Clever, they'll see the icons of the apps and platforms they use in their classroom. By clicking on the icon for any of the apps or programs, the students will be redirected to that app or website and automatically logged in. Clever eliminates the need to remember multiple usernames and passwords. I look forward to being in touch with all of you and feel free to contact me with any questions. Thank you, Beth. Sure. Beth has been a tremendous support during the summer to our teachers. And um, of course, she looks forward to working with all the students and the families. We have a program in our school called the AEP. It's the Academic Enhancement Program. And the director of that is Rachel Lubitz. 
And at the end of this call, if you want to know a little bit more about AEP, she is here and she will be happy to stay on with you. If you can see by the slide, these are uh, some of the things that um, the AEP team does. But the one thing that I think isn't even mentioned, and I think it's really one of the most important pieces, is they're really part of the team. When an AEP teacher is working, let's say, in second or third, fourth or fifth grade, they work closely with the student and they work closely with the teachers as well. It's part of a team. Also this year, Zaniac, which was normally offered in school, is going to be offered in a private or semi-private way, and you can discuss that with Mrs. Lubitz. So that's a very important part of our school. So this is a picture of Rabbi Avi Weberman, and he probably would much rather be where he is now because he's with his family, but he loves the school and would love to have been here. But three days ago, his wife gave birth to a beautiful little baby boy. So we wish him Mazal Tov, and if you wanna know more about his role and about who he is and about the fifth grade, it's A. Weberman at R-A-S-G. Oh, I see, I'm, he is here. So I'd like to ask him to say a few words. I'm sorry, I did not know that. We'll wait for Brittany to. Okay. Can okay, you guys I, hear me? I, really, I want to apologize first. I didn't look at who was here and I'm thrilled that you're here in person. No need. Um, I, I thought I might get off with, uh, you know, we're going on a few hours of sleep, but um, what I really wanted to express and convey to everyone here is how honored and lucky we are with the staff that we have and how throughout the years they've really worked to foster a connection with our students with Torah and the state of Israel and embed these these values within them and it didn't matter physically that we're so far from the state of Israel that connection runs deep and I know that our teachers, because of that love that they have for their students, will make sure that regardless of where they find their student on that given day, they will be connecting to them and bringing them closer to that love for the Torah and that love for the state of Israel and everything that it means to be a Hebrew Academy warrior. And uh, should we, we should be zoche, we should merit to share in many smachot together. Thank you, Mrs. Hamper. Amen, sure, thank you. A perfect segue into that is the hashtag HAConnectED. No matter where you are, if you're, you go onto Twitter, or you go onto Facebook, or you go onto um, any of those places that those hashtags appear, you can find things about the Hebrew Academy. So um, please know this is a brand new thing that we have. And I want to also let you know that um, you can always connect to us as well through email. Teachers are more than willing to answer emails. Please feel free, you can reach out to me. Here are some of the ways that you can learn about our school through the Hebrew Academy Connect Ed. And um, I hope I've given you a good overview. I hope I've given you the confidence that we have and that we're ready for you. We're ready for your children. We can't wait to meet you and um, I'd like to ask if you have any particular questions, if you would send it to me. I see a couple of questions already come up. I'll answer them from the chat and thank you all for attending. So one of the questions was um, how teachers are going to be able to be with their live class as well as with their remote students. So that I, I touched upon, but I'd like to just go in a little deeper. Our goal is to have two adults in every room and perhaps the, the way we will work the adults will depend on how many children are physically in the room and how many children are not in the room. If we have the majority of the students that are remote, then one particular teacher might handle that and the other teacher will handle the physical side and then it could go either way. But the way it's going to work is there will always be a teacher that the remote children will be able to check in with. We'll do something called a station rotation, which children will be able to work with different teachers within the room, as well as opportunities to work on their own. 
I hope it helps you to understand that. I know it's something that we're going to work really hard to make happen because we want children, no matter how they're accessing our school, to feel a part of it. It's a challenge that we feel that we're going to work on. And uh, please give me feedback, you know, if, you know, anything that you want to share with me. Someone asked a very funny um, question. They asked about um, if another teacher could be in another class. Right now, the teachers that are assigned are there. Every room has another adult. I, I really said another adult, but it's really an assistant or a co-teacher. It's not just an adult. So I, I want to make that very, very clear. Uh, someone asked about um, daily attendance. I think that was actually a really good question that I did not address, so I'd like to address it here. Daily attendance is mandatory, whether you're in school or you're virtual. And we will take attendance in school, the very beginning of the day, at the time of tefillah, and we will take attendance during tefillah when it's virtual as well. That is how attendance will be taken and recorded. So that's important, okay. Um, someone wrote that they really love the feel of the Shabbos and the Chagim. So if you came to any of the Shabbat assemblies, and if you came to any of the, um, the Havdalahs that we've had, anything that we've had that's been spirited, you know that we really feel that it is really, really important for children and families to feel connected. And we will do everything we can uh, to really make that possible. One of the things someone asked is about the amount of time that children will be on the computer. So it's really important to note, I, I sort of touched upon it before, but I, I wanna make it a little bit clearer. Children are not expected, if they're doing the school remotely, to sign on at eight o'clock and to sign off at a quarter to four. That's not realistic and that's not what we're looking at. If you looked at the schedule, you notice there were breaks. You'll notice that there were opportunities for small group there are opportunities for independent work. So it isn't going to be always interfacing with the computer. And if over time you find that it's too much for your child, as I explained before, we have the asynchronous learning, which is videos that they can watch. If, they, if it's, they're not available to go to a live class, then they can watch the video of it at their leisure. So they don't have to sit from the moment school starts to the official end time. And um, that's important to note that. I, I can't even imagine even a fifth grader being able to sit in front, even an adult, for the entire time. They need meaningful breaks. They need opportunities to do things independently, and we will provide them. Someone asked a little bit about small groups and one-on-one. -on -one. So it's very, very um, important for individualized attention. And there were times, for example, I think a good example might be if you had a child in kindergarten last year, the children in kindergarten had opportunities to read one-on-one -on -one with the teachers. They put that into their schedule. So one of the things that we have been doing previously, I'll use reading as an example, is we use something called Google Voice. Google Voice is where students in the Judaic Studies Department in particular read something that the teacher has assigned and then the teacher listens to it and then the teacher either comments on it or sends them an email about it or lets them know, you know how they did or what corrections should be done. So that's a way that one-on-one -on -one learning can truly take place in a virtual environment. And it's also important to note that small groups, we're hoping, will be able to incorporate the physical as well as the, as the virtual students. Just because a student is not physically in school, they're not always going to be grouped with all the children that are remote. We want children to have opportunities to have interactions with each other. And it's important that you know that that's really, that's something that we really want to prioritize. Um, okay, someone asked a question, so I want to give a little clarity. The school does officially open on the 24th. That means that on August 24th, your second to fifth graders will be coming to school, but they will be coming virtually. They will sign on and you'll get more information about how that will look and all of that, but just to clear up the way it will look in terms of a schedule. From August 24th till the 8th of September, all of their learning will be virtual. Starting on September 8th, if you feel comfortable sending your children to school, and I hope that you will use good judgment and make sure that your children are healthy 
and you've done all the right things, then please feel free to send them. And we will be having simultaneous virtual and physical school. So um, second grade, someone said, is that an exception? But there will be always adults in the room. If a teacher is, is accessing them um, physically, that teacher may be responsible at that time for the physical, and another teacher will be responsible for the virtual. But children will have adult supervision with them and adult direction. Um, I hope um, someone asked who will be the social studies teacher for second grade. Uh, that will be under the umbrella of right now, Noah Shabbat. She will be part of, of that. I, as I explained before, Tammy Goldring is going to be working with students in ELA and in, um, that's the reading and the writing, uh, which is really her passion. And she's, she's very, very excited to be able to join us like that. Um, okay, someone asked if it's possible to meet the fifth grade teachers on Zoom. So truthfully, you can meet every teacher on Zoom. We're going to make an opportunity and we're going to send you a schedule of children meeting each other. And of course, children meeting the teachers. I think it's really important for the kids not to be worried about the first day of school, even though that's very natural, but we're going to try our best to set it up first and foremost that we can see each other without a mask because when they come to school, they will be required to wear masks. All of our staff will be wearing masks. And so the way we look now and the way we're going to look when we're in school may be different. Also, um, but I just want, I'm sorry, I'm reading the question. Uh, someone um, asked about when we're going to announce the final decisions in terms of fifth grade. We're working on it. We have some things, some irons in the fire, but I don't want to announce anything until it's official. We announced about second grade because it became official, but we absolutely will let you know when we know. Someone asked if there'll be a Zoom orientation for each grade. Yes, there will be. There will be a Zoom orientation. Um, I'm just trying to think if there are any other new questions. I know that we covered a lot. Those of you who are brand new to the school, I really want to let you know that probably this, the teachers and the students and the parents who have been here before know that I'm really responsive, that when you'll send me an email and when you reach out to me, I really try to answer you quickly. I know that people like instant, but I try really hard to be very quick because if it's on your mind, I want to be able to help you with it. Um, let me see. Yes, someone asked about removing the masks. So I think it's important to note that we will have opportunities for mask-free time. One of the most obvious will be during PE. Another time will be during lunch. And also there will be breaks. There is a lot of physical space outside of the classrooms that we will make available on a regular basis for students to be able to take off their masks and they will be, they will be able to just breathe without them. You're, some of you have been asking me questions about the amount of students, how many are virtual, how many are physical. At this particular point in time, I don't have a number for you because I don't have the, the absolute number. Our enrollment is always, I use the expression rolling, in terms of today people might apply, tomorrow they might apply, on August 23rd they might apply, and we welcome students to our school throughout. So in terms of a number of students, I don't have an actual count for you, but the class sizes will pretty much mirror what the class sizes have been in the past. Um, okay, so there was a question asked, and I, I'd like to almost turn this question over to Rabbi Gutenberg or Rabbi Baswich, or I'm not sure if Lynn is on the call. They asked, what if a student tests positive? What will happen? If you could please address that for the, for the families. Sure, good evening everyone. It's so nice to see so many familiar faces. Thank you, Member, for your presentation and for uh, Mrs. Landesman, appreciate that. So if a child in, the, in a class, which is a cohort, so each grade has two cohorts um, located in zones. So if a child or anyone in the class, whether it's a teacher or a child test positive, that class will have to quarantine at home for two weeks, which will be roughly about 10 days of class and then they, uh, 10 days of school, 
and then that group will be allowed back to school after that. Okay, I hope that answers the if question. A, I'll, just, I'll just explain a little further. If a, sure, please. Sorry, if a family, this was not asked, but a little more. If a family member at home tests positive, um, so we do not quarantine the class yet, we look to see if the child of that family member or sibling of a child who's in the class would not be allowed back to class until they um, are able to produce a test that they are negative. Um, and we would ask that child most likely to stay home for two weeks during that time. Um, and of course, all, they would access remotely. So. Correct. All of this um, is actually being finalized by our medical advisory committee. Um, the, the quarantine and the timing has been changing over time. So um, we should, it's in the final stages, but we should have a um, uh, in, informational booklet regarding all of the procedures, the medical procedures this year, which um, within a week will hopefully be, be mailed out to the parents. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your clarity. Um, I'm looking at the chat and I don't see any more questions. So I wanna take this opportunity again to thank you for coming. I'm going to ask Mrs. Lubitz to come on the screen and, um, oh, I, I have a question. Okay, let me, let me, let me get to this, the question because before we go to that, the question was asked for devices. So what we're going to do is we're going to let you know that in school, students will have use of the school devices, but if you are a virtual student, you will have to supply your own device. Also, one of the things I would suggest, but I'm not definitely I'm just suggesting, that if, you, if your plan is to have your students be virtual for a long time, if that's how, how you feel, I would suggest that um, we're going to try to put a list together of what the most preferred devices would be. We want to help you with that. And maybe even consider uh, a possibility of getting a printer. We really are going to try not to have too many things that you would have to print, but it's possible there might be things like for handwriting and other sort of things. So I'm just giving you sort of a heads up. Someone asked me about new students. So I wanted to say that um, I, I go through the admissions with uh, Dr. Amy Eskinosa and the rest of the team, and I'm so proud that so many people who have never been in the Hebrew Academy have decided that this is going to be a great place for their children. Many of you come from schools I'm very familiar with, like Ramaz, Manhattan Day School, um, Hafter, Hal, those are my New York people. There are people from the UK, there are people from Canada, people from Israel, that's wonderful. We definitely will prioritize ways for new students to become acclimated with current students who have been here a long time. It, we want your children to be comfortable. If they make some friends and they feel comfortable, that's going to be the best experience for them. They say that people don't always remember what you taught them, they remember how you made them feel. And we really want them to feel the love and the warmth that everyone feels either if they're working or they're attending the Hebrew Academy. Um, okay, I, I think that's about, oh, someone asked about printing package. Okay, packets, yes. There will be packets that could be distributed and we will, we will work that out grade by grade, how to do that with advance notice. I know that last year we did have some teachers that arranged for pickup places. We're finalizing how to do everything. Remember, we're trying to coordinate the hybrid and all the ramifications of that. So we will, we, thank you for bringing it up. And it's definitely something we will work on. Um, Rabbi Gutenberg, did you want, yeah, please. Yes, there's um, some questions that came to me. So if, if you don't mind, I can, can I address them? Um, so sure. two questions that came to me were about the spacing inside the classroom, as well as the cleaning in the school. So we're going to have regular cleaning um, throughout the day, we actually bought three industrial cleaning mechanisms, which could um, disinfect the rooms very quickly. Every single classroom will be completely disinfected overnight, as well as during a transitional shift in the middle of the day, when one group goes to Judaic, other group goes to general studies and vice versa. During that time, we also plan to have the class disinfected, as well as inside the classroom, there are going to be wipes, disinfectant, um, 
uh, Lysol wipes and sprays that we do hope that um, some of our students and teachers will be able to make sure that their desks are completely clean throughout the entire time, as well as the bathrooms. There will be someone walking around campus cleaning all the door handles um, throughout, throughout the day. And the desks in the classroom will be spaced accordingly. We, once we have the final numbers from our parents, which will be in the next week or so, you should be getting an email um, that will ask what your preference is to be coming virtually or be coming in person on September 8th for second and third and fourth and fifth on September 14th. Once we have those exact numbers, we'll have a better understanding of exactly how the classrooms are going to be spaced, but they will be socially distant spaced inside the classroom. We are not planning on putting plastic dividers in front of every single student. We plan to have the students inside the classroom wearing masks um, spaced out so that they could feel as much as if they were in a classroom like last year. Any other questions for you? I have one more question that came to me. Oh, so there's a question that said, if a student is doing virtual classroom and they are connected live, can they ask a question to the teacher that is teaching the physical Absolutely. classroom? The answer is yes. And the, the, the way that it's being done is actually today and yesterday we had delivered um, flat screens, 55 inch flat screens for every single classroom, kindergarten through 12th grade in the school, as well as updated smart boards. And in each classroom, there will be a screen with students who are virtually will be displayed on those screens, as well as the assistants in the classroom will be helping monitor the screen. So a student at home can raise their hand and ask a question to the teacher live, and the teacher live can address both students physically in the classroom, as well as the students who are at home. Someone asked me to repeat the current status of the fifth grade general studies teachers. So as I said before, it's a team effort. So far, we're putting together the team with Mrs. Pinasov and with Mrs. Ruffman. We have other things, other irons in the fire, and we will definitely let you know. You know, it's a very big decision because we really want excellent. So please understand, please be a little bit patient. I mean, we've been working on this for a long time. And uh, candidates that don't stand up the muster, we're not going to just take someone because they're applying. We're looking for the quality, but we definitely will let you know when we have something. As soon as something is solidified, you will definitely be informed. Yes, there will be two adults in the classroom. One will be monitoring the virtual, one will be monitoring the physical. Also, it will depend on how many students are in each part in terms of what that will look like. Uh, no more questions. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Lubitz, and you can um, please say hello here. Hi, everybody. My name is Rachel Lubitz, and I'm Academic Enhancement Program Director. I'm beginning my eighth year at the Hebrew Academy this year. Um, and this year, services will be provided by the amazing AEP teachers in the areas of math, language arts, Judaic studies, as well as Esau and Nahina. Students will be seen in a small group or one-to-one -one instruction. Services will be, will be provided as push-in or pull-out, and we'll assess each student at the beginning of the year, either virtually or physically in school, to determine their current skill levels. Goals will then be created based on their current performance. Something also important to note is that Zaniac will be provided virtually to students in small groups of three or less or individually. And for more information, please reach out to me and I will put my, um, my email address in the chat. And if there's any other questions, I'm always here to answer them. And I welcome everybody to a wonderful school year, either virtually or physically. I hope to see everyone soon. Thank you. And um, there was one other question that came through. Uh, it's not a question that I can answer. So, um, well, there's two parts to the question. So one part of the question was, do programs have extra costs? And the answer to that is no. Those of you who have been in the school previously know that we have something that we used to call the menu of expenses that is no longer. Everything is built in to the tuition. But the other question is, someone asked about a question about tuition. So I'm gonna turn it over to Rabbi Gutenberg because that's not something that I really get involved with. Uh, so if you don't mind, if you could please address that. Um, I don't what they just what, said I asked a question about tuition, but I don't know 
what that question is. Okay, so I um, just wrote. I asked a question about tuition. Got it. So tuition um, right now, tuition is still the same as it was when it was announced. Um, if a family is struggling financially, we would really encourage you to apply. We have a very robust financial aid um, uh, amount this year. It has been increasing daily, and we've been working with um, any family that has reached out to us to offer them significant financial aid to come to the school. Thank you. Okay, I got another couple of questions here. Uh, someone asked about bus service. So to my knowledge, this year, there, there probably will not be bus service because the restrictions that are put on are just more than are possible. If that changes at any time, if we're able to work something out, we will let you know. We understand very much that many of you would really appreciate that service. So um, it is something that we definitely, the business department handles that. And trust me when I say they have looked at every which way to make it feasible, but right now we're not able to do that. Someone asked if kids from classes will be able to get together. Well, firstly, they definitely have PE together. That's something that they have together. Also, it might be possible for them to work out some outside breaks together. But in terms of phys physically being together within the school building, children will remain within their cohort. It's just safer and cleaner that way. Um, okay, I don't think, I like to say like last call. <laughs> um, Rabbi Guttenberg, do you have any other questions that people have posed to you? Okay, so I'd like to thank you all for coming. Uh, if you need to reach me, I can be reached at my email at dhamburg at rasg.org. You'll be getting many emails from me. I want to thank the members of the administration who are here, the teachers who are here, and of course, the families that are here. Thank you very much for trusting, trusting your most precious jewels with us. As one of my teachers has said, we're not just teaching children, we're teaching neshamas, and we feel it. So thank you, have a beautiful evening. Rachel Lubitz, if you'd like to stay on a few minutes, and if anyone has questions for Rachel about AEP, this would be a good opportunity. So thank you all and have a beautiful evening.